have our favourite superhero. Maybe it is Superman, or Spider-Man, or Catwoman, or Batman, or Wonder Woman, or Plastic Man. And we have certain reasons for liking them, or admiring their superpowers, or ability to fight the bad guys in the name of truth, justice, and something else that I can't remember. We know them as their characters, but in the stories, some people only know them as Clark, or Peter, or Selina, or Bruce, or Diana, or Ed. So what is it about someone which conditions how we see them? Experience, trust, familiarity, belief, need, or something more. And that is what our Gospel today calls us to consider. Not about whether Bruce Wayne is Batman or not, but about just who Jesus Christ is to us. Let's look at the reading again. We find Jesus taking time out with his buddies, and he asks them casually, What's the word on the street about me, boys? What do the people out there think about me? Who do they say I am? Perhaps Jesus knows that it'll be easier for the disciples to talk about other people's opinions than their own. It's often that way, isn't it? My friend thinks is always easier to say than I think. So they tell him. John the Baptist, perhaps. You know, Elijah, Jeremiah, or maybe another prophet. Those are the rumours that are going around. Well, that is a good start. They are all pretty impressive men of God. It seems that the general populace do at least respect Jesus as an important figure, although perhaps more of the prelude rather than the main act. OK, says Jesus, cutting to the chase. Now what about you guys? Who do you say that I am? Remember, the disciples have been together with him all along, not just heard second-hand news. Rather, they've witnessed his miracles and they have heard his teaching. And it's Simon who blurts out, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Well done, Simon. Spot on, is what Jesus says. Then he does something interesting. He gives Simon a new name, as you do, to signify that something in him has changed. A bit like the Christian name that some Japanese take when they are baptised to signify that change within. You'll be called Rocky, Jesus says. Well, Peter actually, but it means the same. And you will be the strong foundation for this new community that I'm going to build. And so there we have it. The establishment of the church we are all part of today started with a confession of faith from Simon Peter of just who Jesus was to him. So you may be wondering, what has this got to do with us? And I would guess the answer is pretty obvious, really. And it is that Jesus asks that same question to us today. Now, none of us had the chance to learn firsthand from Jesus like the disciples did. But we've all grown in our faith over the years in various ways and from various sources, through friends, family, church, experiences we've had, and so on. Wherever we've been exposed to God's love, care, protection, guidance, and encouragement. 
And so now we all have our own faith. None of us quite the same. We share something communal, but still very personal, very individual. And that is good. And over time, as our faith developed, we also formed our own understanding and perception of Jesus. Perhaps it's been subconsciously. And in times of prayer, in times of contemplation, in times of worship, and in times of hardship, these are probably the images which come to mind when we think of whom we are connecting with. Now, I'm not talking purely of images as in how Jesus looks, although that may be part of what has shaped our faith, but more of what exactly Jesus means in our lives today. And that is the question the Gospel reading wants us to ask ourselves. Is he just a focus of our attention for an hour or so on Sundays? Or something more? Who is Jesus to us today? And the range of possible answers is endless, from being a historical figure, a boy from the outback of Galilee who did good, to the subject of a poster seen in many homes which says, Christ is the head of this house, the unseen guest of every meal, the silent listener to every conversation, and everything between those extremes. So who is Jesus for you? Is he somebody you build your lives upon and for? Or is he somebody you talk to and think of only when you are in need, when things are difficult? Or the harder question, if you say he is your saviour and lord, with all that entails, as we do each week when we recite the creed together, are they just empty words? Or do your faith, actions and lives really reflect what you say? Like the disciples, we are asked who Jesus Christ is for us, not the world. Who do we see? Who do we pray to? Who do we hear and follow? Who do we believe in? Who do we love? To be Christian means believing that Jesus is the Son of the living God and the Messiah of all humankind, but also that he is not distant, rather very much alive and active in this world, and calling us to a journey with him. Some people may never get to believe in Superman because they can't see beyond Clark Kent. Likewise, some might find it hard to believe in Jesus alive today because they can see no further than an historical being, the son of Joseph the carpenter, a great teacher amongst others of the past. And it's our job and the mission of the church founded on Peter to help educate them using all the unique gifts we've been given. And that all starts with understanding who Jesus is to us. Consider that question well, because it will shape who you are, how you live, and who we will be. Let's pray. Loving Father God, open our eyes, our hearts and our minds to see you as Saviour, as Messiah, as Lord, 
and help us to live in the power of your name, Jesus the Christ. Amen.